We're going to begin a study this morning in the book of Proverbs. We, all of you, are very aware that we finished our study in Revelation. And I, and I was wanted to begin this morning in chapter 1. Excuse me. <clears throat> We're going to look into chapter 1, beginning this study on the book of Proverbs. And Proverbs is one of those books that a lot of people are encouraged to read along with the Psalms. Do you remember the little Gideon Bibles that you got when you were in school? If you were in public school and you got those little Bibles, well, it included the Psalms and the Proverbs, didn't it? Yep. So there, they, there's a lot here that we have read through the years. We have uh, accumulated in our hearts and in our spirits through the years. But you know, when God begins to give revelation concerning his word, it's, you can never exhaust the word of God. Amen. You can never exhaust it. You can never say, well, I already know Proverbs. Well, I can't say that. And I, you know, and in, in what few years that I have been a student of learning the Word of God, I, I found out I'm, you know, I'm still learning. That's right. We're, we're, we haven't get gotten to the place that we know it all. That's right. But I, I want to present this to you this morning. I believe in the way that the Lord had been ministered to me about it. We're going to look in, I'm going to read verses 1 through 6. And then I'm going to discuss some of what, and that's kind of where we're going to do this so we can get through this chapter. Verse number one, it reads, The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to receive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment and equity. To give subtility to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. To understand a proverb and the interpretation the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Now, to begin with, that as it starts out, this this are a collection of the proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. And in in this in this whole collection, it is that we may know wisdom to receive instruction and to gain knowledge and increase in learning. So within the body of Christ, we have these, these goals set before us. Yeah. To know wisdom. Well, I want to end it, and, and you know this, but I have, to, I have to tell you in a way that you don't know. Wisdom, as we're speaking of here in the book of Proverbs, is a person. And that person has a name, and his name is Jesus Christ. That's right. That is wisdom. That is who the author of this, of course, the Holy Spirit, is introducing to believers to, to learn, to take, and, and receive of the Lord Jesus Christ. He alone is wisdom. Right. And that right there is enough. If I didn't say anything else this morning... I mean, we could take it and chew on that for a long time and get some good things out of it, couldn't we? So we're going to look into this understanding that wisdom is a person and his name is Jesus Christ. And as being a believer, as being a part of God's family now, we can take and learn of him. We can gain understanding. We can have that knowledge and that increase of learning that comes when we present ourselves unto him and into the structure 
that he gave for the church on how we are to do this. How is that done? We become part of a local assembly, a body, that we can come and submit ourselves unto God and to increase and to learn from the scripture. That does not, of course, take the place or omit daily Bible study or daily prayer. Right. So understand that, but God has an, an, uh, an order that many people have forgot. They have forgotten and they have become deceived to the point to think that I do not need to go to a church. And I'm not fussing this morning. So certainly not at y'all because y'all are here. <laughs> Praise God. You're here an hour earlier than you was last Sunday. But that never, never allow anything to separate that important truth within your heart and spirit that we need to be a part of the body a body of believers it does not mean that if you come here and I, I've got to say this and you're part of this church that you're part of God's family that ain't how it works but because we become a part of God's family then we can be a part of a local assembly of believers and have the self-same spirit working within each other's lives. Because, you know, God's been giving us some really good instruction and teaching concerning these things. So we have to always, whenever we are presented, when we present ourselves, in other words, I can say it that way, that we're here not thinking about what's going on at home, what's, what I've got to do with the rest of my day, the things that people are needing me to do. No, we are to just set all of that aside and listen to what he or she may be speaking to us out of the Word of God. Because that is how important it and how vital it is for our spiritual health and well-being. That we give our attention. That we present that, that we yield ourselves to receive of him. So that is, throughout this, we read this and we see how that we may know wisdom, receive instruction, to gain knowledge and increase in learning. Yes. Verse number seven. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and Instruction. I want to read this to you out of the Amplified Version this morning. Get to, to kind of amplify it or to open it up maybe a little better. It says, The reverent and worshipful, worshipful fear of the Lord is the beginning and the principle and choice part of knowledge. It's the starting point and its essence. So I'm going to stop right there before I finish the rest of the verse. To me, it's saying the same way that we got in and began to learn is the same way we stay in and keep learning. Right. We never lose our fear of the Lord. And when we trust and we believe in His Word, then we have a guarantee and know that we have that fear of the Lord working in us. Because we're, we're attaining knowledge from his word. We're gaining instruction from what he has to say in the matter. Right. We, we have that reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord working in our life. The last part it says, But fools despise skillful and godly wisdom, instruction, and discipline. Now, that's the one word that we don't like to hear, is discipline. You know that it's a healthy thing to understand that you and I can be wrong sometimes. Right. You know? And that we need to be able to receive that and not get all upset and think that what I, you know, 
That ain't what God's been showing me. Well, just think about what was said just for a minute. Just, just ponder on it. Just give it a little time to sink in. And more than, more than not, I have found that, you know, I was wrong. And maybe what God was trying to tell me through somebody else. First of all, God's always right. Doesn't mean the person's right that's saying they're hearing from God. But we have to judge these things. We have to have an open uh, attitude to receive whether or not that I thought, that I, the way I thought was right all this time. So understand that discipline, and that of course goes in with our our personal disciplines as it concerns reading the Word of God, praying, spending time in His presence, understanding that you know every thing, every breath that we take, every minute of the day that we have is a gift from God, and we always understand that. That's that helps me a lot in, in the successes, if you could say it that way, of the disciplines that I have entered into as being a child of God. Now, now do I always do everything right? Of course not. I haven't got there yet. But when we make our, when we make our mindset to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have this discipline in my life. I'm going to live by this. I'm, I was, this is what the Word of God backs up. It'll make a difference, and you may not see it immediately, but you will see it come to pass. Because God's Word promises that to us. It tells us that we will see the thing, the goodness of the Lord. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. But you know, that's not just for people that aren't exercising the privileges of, of, of learning and growing and receiving what God has to say concerning us. Now, I said that kind of in a roundabout way, but understand, yes, God's goodness and mercy is for all, but all may not realize it. They may not enter into it and really learn to rest in what he has given but we ha always have to have that attitude to receive of him and not know that it's, you know, my way is what's right. My way of thinking. God's word tells us that, what did he say? That my ways aren't your ways. And our thinking ain't his thinking. I'm paraphrasing. But we have to, we have to remember that. Now, in Psalm number 111 and 10, you can write this down as a side note. It tells us, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Same thing we just read here in verse number 7 where it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Now, so understand these two work simultaneously together. It says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they who do his commandments. And you know, to enable to do his commandments, we have to have a relationship with the one that gives us the grace to be able to do. That gives us the power of the Spirit working within our lives to be able to do his commandments. Right. And even whenever you fail to do his commandments, if your faith is perfected in the one who kept the commandments, that, in, that never failed. And your faith is squarely and, and, and rooted and only in Him. Then we are still looked at as a law keeper. And a commandment keeper even though we... Eat, and, but that never gives us an excuse to say, Oh, well, I don't have to... No, you do have to keep the commandments. But He gives us the ability to do it. Not only the desire to do it, but he gives us the ability. Right. And when he says that here in just a few more verses down, I want to I 
interject here at this moment in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 through 24. I want to read that very quickly because I believe it will, it will help um, understand when, I, when we're talking about wisdom, we're talking about knowledge, and it ties it together for us today. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, it says, For the preaching of the cross to them that perished is foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So here he has a contrast of, of true wisdom versus man's wisdom. Man's learning in his own strength, in his own intellect. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. So that is the message that we, that we must always have as our guideline. It must always be Christ and him crucified, verse 24. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, it says Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. So here we see it right here in the scripture that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the one who gave his life's blood for the sin of the world, is the wisdom of God. He is the very plan of God. When we talk about how great, such a great salvation that we have, it is because of Him. It is because He came. It is because He died. It is because He was put in the grave and rose again after the third day. So understand that that. We never separate that when we speak of Jesus Christ. We never separate that. That's why we've seen all throughout the book of Revelation, even as John was seeing these visions and they were related to him, he saw the Lamb of God as it had been slain. Think about how powerful that is, that it will go on throughout eternity. The Lamb of God as he had been slain. Also, I'm not going to go there for time's sake, but you can write down Colossians chapter 2, where it says, In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So, the wisdom and knowledge are there and it's available in Jesus Christ. And, a lot of, and the reason a lot of times people don't attain to it and they don't grasp it is because they don't know Jesus as the true Lamb of God. Yes. They know him only by name. They don't know him only by a, a, a man of history, a great prophet, someone who done miracles. But you know, there's something about whenever we, as human beings, when we learn and we begin learning, because I, I want to testify to you this morning, I started learning about the Bible before I ever even knew the author. Of the Bible. I want you to think about that for a minute. And you know how much of it I understood? <laughs> Just about that much. Yeah. Because the natural man cannot receive right. the things of the Spirit of God. He cannot. Right. We have to be born again. We have to be a child of God to understand his word. Now, yes, 
I know, and I, I know the power of God. I, I, I've experienced some. I don't know it I know it, but I mean, I experienced it, and I understand that God has brought the new birth. He has saved people simply by opening the Word and beginning to read the Word. I understand that. I believe that 100%. But to take and say, I'm going to learn the Bible, I'm going to study the Bible, and we're not a child of God, if we're not saved, that we don't know the author, you're not going to get very far. There's going to be, it's going to be just a book to you. It's not going to be life there. You're not going to be drinking from the wells of salvation. You're not going to receive that fresh anointing from on high. Whenever the word is, is made alive to you, when, it's, when it's, it's the very breath that you need to survive, I remember... One of the biggest changes that happened to me when I was born again, I wanted to read the Word of God. I wanted it because I, for the first time I could read it and it was doing something in me. It was giving me new life. It was renewing in me hope. It was renewing in me strength. So that's, that's why it's important and we believe that we, we are saved, but we stay saved. Okay? I'm going to say it that way. Because when we get saved, now we have a road that we're walking and we're living and we're rejoicing and we're happy and we're free. But there's snares and there's distractions and there's evil men and seducers that are wanting to steer the child of God off the wrong path. So it's our responsibility, even as these proverbs are bringing out, and I got to hurry up, that we have a responsibility. Now go on in on to the next verse with me. He says in verse eight, "My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother." Godly fathers and mothers are the subject. Not that we are to ever disrespect our father and mother while we're in their home being brought up. But if we did not have, or if you listen to me this morning by media, or do not have a godly father and mother, we are to be an example unto them to respect, to honor but always understand that we obey God above all rather so if we're ever instructed through something ungodly by ungodly fathers and mothers we we do have the right and the the uh, responsibility to say no I can't do that right. for the child of God I'm speaking so godly mothers and fathers and mothers are the subject here. So when it says, forsake not the law of thy father, the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. He says in verse 9, For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. The Amplified Version brings out that this, this, uh, this ornament of grace unto thy head, it is actually referred to as the victor's chaplet, they call it, that they would wear on their head when they had won something of notability. And, and also the chains, of course, that they represent uh, kingly, kingship, uh, a place and, and position of authority. This is what it will be to you as as a son or a daughter who who doesn't forsake the instruction and the, the law of our parents in a godly sense. Because we don't realize, and I, I think we do, of course, but it's easy to take for granted sometimes if you had godly parents. Because we kind of, until we realize and understand, everybody didn't. Right. 
And, and a lot of times it, people go through a lot of things in life before they finally come and find, you know, the salvation in Christ. So we're never to look, you know, at a person and wonder why. Wonder why did it take so long or why didn't you come in sooner or, or to think we're better or you're better than them. And I'm not saying you do that, but it's there. People do that sometimes. And we, understand, we don't have a problem with that here, but I, I just need you to understand that this is the importance of having godly leadership in the family, in instruction and in law. You know, that's, that's truth to that in having the, you know, in the, the comedy part of it of understanding that when I hear Brother Allen say it before, and I've heard others say it, that they had a drug problem when they was a child. Because mama drug them to church. Or daddy drug them to church. They didn't. There was a time they would have been rather fishing. Yeah. They'd have been rather going, hanging out, doing other things. Whatever, you know. But we have that responsibility. Right. So he says, there's a reason he says this. If we look at verse... 10 through 14. This is a result of wrong choices made without God's counsel. I'll read, My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. It just simply says, don't do it. Right. If sinners entice thee, consent thou not. He says, If they say, Come with us, let us lie for blood. Let us lurk privately for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up Alive is the grave and whole, and those that go, go, go down to the pit. We shall find all precious substance and shall fill all houses with spoil. They have believed a lie of the devil. Because the devil lies, he is the father of lies, and he causes men to believe the lie. Right. And they go forward believing that they're going to get something good. He says, cast in thy lot among us, lest us all have one purse. Sadly to say that the wages of sin is death. That's what's in that purse. Whenever they would go and they would go in and, and run with these, these sinners. Ephesians 5 and 11 tells us, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. As a child of God, we have to, to understand that. In whatever way and form that it comes to us, don't go that way. Consent not to go with them, but rather reprove them. Yeah. Rather let them know that, hey, that's what you're doing ain't right. It's your business, but it's my responsibility to tell you that it ain't right. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to give any names, but I had an opportunity to tell a young man that this past week. He was living with his girlfriend. And I said, it ain't none of my business, but what you're doing ain't right. right. Because the book, I, I refer to it as the book because I had it right there close by. I said, that book right there tells us that it ain't right. Yeah. So just, you know, just, now I said, I'm not trying to make you, you know, do whatever, but I got to tell you that it ain't right. So that's our responsibility. And then do it, of course, in love. And don't do it, you know, hateful and, and, and you know, prideful and, 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 and not, you know, want to see them burn in hell. No, we want to see them saved. Because later on in that conversation, I got to tell him, I says, you know, whosoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I got to share with him how that happened for me. And it happened when I called on him. When I called on him. That's the only way. Oh, what a Savior. Aren't you, aren't, can't you rejoice this morning in that fact to know that he reached down and he saved us? We call on him. We continue to call on him. Whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord. Now let me go on. It says, verse 15 cries out and says, my son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. So even if you had started on the path, get off the path. Amen. 
Come away from it. Wisdom is crying out here, is beginning to cry out, says, do not do it. This is not the way. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird, and the, they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privately for their own lives. So are the ways of every one that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. So that is the end result. Again, it's the it's understanding that it's not without harm. Even, even, even if people put off, okay, I'm going to say it that way. And that's a dangerous, dangerous thing to spurn the calling and the wooing that God is, is trying to draw sinners to repentance. It's dangerous to, to refuse. Yes. It's very dangerous. Amen. But I still believe that even up to the point of death, if that person, if they have rejected God's love all their life and they hear that call once again that they can they can receive does it mean they'll get up off their deathbed and be made whole okay or or if they live several more years does it mean that they'll live without pain or that they'll live without whatever if everything will be grand and glorious no it doesn't mean that but it does mean that they can understand and know that, hey, yes, God is a God of grace and mercy because he received me. Right. The vilest of the vile. The worst of, of any that, you know, you can name. And understand that any sin, of course, is, is disgusting and cannot be received in God's sight. So, there's, you know, I'm not really trying to make a difference of sin, but... We know that sometimes people are involved with stronger or worse sins than others. That's all I'm trying to say. Or well, they've done it a lot longer. Because we're all born a sinner. And we need a Savior. Because we were born. That's why we need a Savior, because we were born. And we're, we're living and we're on this planet now. Now, uh, verse number 20. Wisdom now invites all men to become her sons. It's open for all, all who will hear, all who will receive. I want to read down through verse 22. It says, Wisdom cries without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates in the city. She uttereth her words, saying, How long? How long, how long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. That question continues to go out through the ages. How long? Time is running short. Time is being Shortened. I, I'm just going to say it that way. We're running out of time. Right. How long? And you know this word simple, you simple ones, we're not to, I found out and I learned that if we're classified as someone who's simple, meaning that we have become comfortable and have an attitude that we're okay because I ain't going to do nothing. I ain't going to learn nothing. I'm not going to have responsibility to do anything. So simple ones is not always just someone who don't know anything, but they're willing to learn. This is talking about people who don't even want to learn. They don't want the responsibility that comes with learning. So when we be careful when we say, well, I'm just a simple man or I'm just a simple woman. Just be careful that you don't, that you understand what you're saying. That's all I'm saying. So, Because it seems that we have never seen a generation and that has affected this generation more of people who doesn't want responsibility. 
who run from responsibility, but they complain when they don't have more. When they can't earn more on their job. When they seem stuck at a dead-end job. Think about it. What's your thoughts toward responsibility? Are you willing to, to, to be, to, to move up in your company? Are you willing to take on new responsibilities and new jobs? Do you expect to get paid more for doing nothing? To just keep doing the same thing? It's important to have that uh, a balance and understand that if you want more pay, you need to be willing to be more responsible. To learn more, to be a greater asset to your boss. I know that y'all have, many of y'all have made it. Y'all have made that retirement. I want to hang out with y'all more. <laughs> if that could just rub off a little quicker, but it don't happen. But you didn't get there by quitting. You didn't get there by shirking responsibility. You understood that. And you understood that, hey, there's, there's more to that than what I think sometimes that, you know, is going on. It's, Jesus said in Luke 7, 35, that wisdom is justified of all her children. I don't have time to really go into what all was being said there, but that was the key verse I want to use. Wisdom is justified of all of her children. Meaning that if we call ourselves a child of God, knowing Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, it needs to be evident of our surroundings. Our surroundings need to take note and see that the people in our circle, our friends need to see and know that. Verse 23. Turn you at my reproof. One word goes on throughout the ages. Repent. Repent. Turn at my reproof, he says. Wisdom says, Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. If you will turn it at his reproof, if we will repent, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. See, we, we, have to, we have to become one of his. Even if we have strayed and allowed sin to, to begin to come in our lives, we have to come back to him. He says, I will pour out my spirit unto you, and I will make my words known unto you. Think about, think about how powerful that is. Amen. How good God is if we'll just say yes and turn unto him. Yeah. We, our lives have, can change in, in, in less than a moment's time right. when we say yes to Jesus. When we keep saying yes and we keep saying committed, we're just continually changing and, and being changed right. from glory unto glory unto glory. Because his spirit has been given to us and his words are being made known unto us. Wow. His words. Not man's. His words. Because I've called and you refused. I've stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But you said it in all, all my counsel and would none of my reproof. I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear comes. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction comes as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish comes upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they that hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, they would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproofs. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. I'm going to stop right there before I finish up. We have this given to us here this morning in the Word of God. And this, I do believe that this does not mean 
that if you have turned from that reproof, that you'll never get to come back. I'm not saying that. Because we serve a good God. We serve a God who is continually stretching forth his hand. But understand what I said a while ago. It is a dangerous place to be in when we keep saying no to God. That's right. The day will come when those, even if they seek him early, it says they shall not find him. We're not to boast in that. We're not to be glad at that. When we look at somebody that we know was rejected, but we're with a brokenness in our spirit, need to continue to lift those people up. Amen. Continue to pray for those people. Continue with a heart sincerity to know that God, your hand is not short. Neither is your hand and your arm strong, weakened, but you have a strong right arm. And you're able to reach out and save those. But Lord, if they'll only turn. If they'll only give in, if they'll only say yes to you, that's our, that should be the cry of our heart. But God's word is true. God's word is true. That's why we with fear and trembling that we understand when we're in his presence. In fear and trembling and not in boastfulness and, and, and not in pride, but to understand that when we're in his presence, we're before God. The creator, the judge of all the earth. And we can continue to know that the assurance that comes when our faith is put squarely and put 100% in the sacrifice that he gave for man to come to know him. That we can rejoice in that and be glad and exalt his name and, re and, and, be, and, That's right. and live a life of thanksgiving because... Yes. Always in the right perspective. And the last verse, it says, For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. That's powerful as we see that around us many times. But whoso hearkeneth unto me, whosoever hearkeneth unto me, he says, shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Evil's all around, church. Yes, amen. But we can live a life of victory and peace and knowing that God is our keeper. He is our strong tower. He is our help even in the very present time of trouble. We can have that quietness, that peace, and that rest, even in the midst of evil times. But we've got to hearken unto what his word says. Amen? That's right. I want to be a hearkener. Amen. I want to listen. I want to receive. I want to, to take that knowledge and grow in it. Amen? Amen. Thank you all for your attention this morning. I, I hope it's been something to help you. And we're, I'm looking forward to continue on in our study in the book of Proverbs. Amen. God bless you.